Hello everybody. You know, I do wonder sometimes, are we as gardeners too efficient? Sounds like a, a silly thing really, but I'll go on to explain a little bit more about that a little bit later. We'll just have a quick look around the front of the plot here and then we'll wander off. <laughs> so I've already had one harvest off the purple broccoli and as you can see, there's more to come this week. It's been absolutely beautiful. Um, we've still got some kale left. Mostly the dwarf kale down there. I think that might be showing signs of going to seed, really. I don't know. Hopefully not. Some cauliflowers in here, and these are the first of my boxes. I had my carrots in, that's got mesh on it. And over here, one of the taller plastic boxes that's got broad beans in it. And in a couple of weeks' time, the lid will come off that, and there'll just be surrounded protection. That's a different story and we'll talk about that later. But in this carrot box, which has got the mesh in, I've been using that as a cold frame and I've got flowers in there. I've got sweet peas, um, amimagus, sweet rocket and cornflowers in there. They'll be getting planted out in two or three weeks time. So that's doubling up as a bit of a cold frame at the minute. Had a hard frost last night, no effect on those plants. So that's brilliant and that's another use for these boxes. I built these boxes square like this because they're panelised. The idea being when they're not in use is that I take them down and store them away so they don't take up space. But the more and more I've had them and I'm using them, the more uses I'm finding for them. And these particular boxes, all these out in the plot and there's one, two, three, four and there's a smaller one behind there, five. These haven't been dismantled now for over two years. They've been in constant use, which is good. Anyway, moving on. And the garlic over here, normal garlic, the elephant garlic at the end. That's doing remarkably well around Christmas time. There was no sign of any of this garlic at the front, but that's all come up lovely now. And beds ready and prepared for onions and shallots on this side. So we're all looking fairly good. Still work to be done, lots of it, but it'll all come in time. So here's the hanging shelf. I feature it a lot because I think it's such a good idea protecting against pests, but it's not without pest damage. These are my sweet peas. These were germinated on my kitchen floor. And then as soon as they germinated, they were brought down here to slow the growth and let them start to grow better. You can see they're actually leaning, leaning over towards the light. So I'll turn them around. But what you can see in here is some of these little stems here, they have been attacked. A couple of these little plants have been munched. And this morning when I came down and noticed it, I lifted up these trays and had a look, searched this shelf thoroughly underneath all the trays and underneath these module trays as well, searched around. I found two slugs, one underneath this one and one underneath this snapdragon. So they've gone and I'm going to need to put some more pellets on the shelf just in case there's one or two. And they've probably come in with these sweet peas, with the compost that um, I sow the sweet peas in. They've probably come in with that because the rest of these trays have been here all winter long without any damage at all. Hopefully I've caught the only remaining slugs in there, but I'm going to keep a close eye on that now. Only lost a couple of plants, so I'm not too concerned. But I also want to point out this. These are more of my um, snapdragons. And you may remember I took the tips off and planted them. They appear to be growing in there at the moment. And what it has done is it's promoted this little growth. You can see these side shoots coming here in comparison with these other snapdragons that I haven't pinched out. So you can actually see the difference that that's made just pinching them out just about a week ago, I think it was. I can now do the rest of them, pop them into that little tray and it's more plants for free and it'll promote extra branching on these snapdragons. Now, between all the, um, the sewing videos I've been making this last month, getting things started at home, I've been painting all this recycled timber and starting to clear this plot to get these new beds in. The first one is now in, uh, it needs a little bit of adjustment, but there'll be six of these going all the way down the back there. You can see where I've moved the path over from. The path was here. I've moved it over to here to facilitate these longer beds. 
and this leaves me with an eight foot bed here that's 40 foot long. At the minute I've got sweet williams there, sweet peas will be going here, a little bit of a patio in the middle area here where this wire is and this bit of metal and then from here downwards will be my dahlia beds with, and these will be permanent deep filled beds and with a path in the middle so I can get easy access to them. Uh, yes, I've still a lot of work to do, but hopefully all these beds here will be made this next week, 10 days. Then I can get them filled up. And I want them all no dig, all these beds here, the dahlia bed and all these beds. So back in the big tunnel again, and some of you have probably noticed already the soil area, which had all the pak choy and tat soy in. We've eaten a good amount of it. We didn't eat all of it and it went to seed, um, which was a good result. It went about a week ago. It threw up and went to seed. And I know Steve Richards from Steve Seaside Allotments commented that his went to seed in January and he wanted to know when I sowed the seeds. I didn't respond to the question, but it was the end of August, Steve. That's when uh, I sowed those. But this is the efficiency bit. I think because I've made such a good tunnel here and it's so sort of airtight that it's, it's kept all the uh, warm air in here. And this is why the plants did so well in here in the first place. But we'll go into the little tunnel now and we'll have a look at uh, some pak choy planted in there from the same batch that I sowed and planted here. Now I can't remember quite how old this tunnel is. It's somewhere around seven or eight years old and it's shown its age now. The windows are, are broken. And so it, it's not a perfect seal like the big polytunnel is. In fact, you can see where that window has been flapping around. It's not all the, the moss and algae off the outside of there and it's been flapping around. But all the windows are like that. They're either pinned down with safety pins or on the last re remaining serviceable bit of Velcro. And you can see that they're all, they've all had it. And that's lets the cold in. It's some protection from overhead. It's some protection from overhead uh, winter weather. But in here, I've got pak choy growing as well from the same batch. And that's just, yes, since yesterday, it started to bolt. And that makes me think that if we grow in a protected environment and then take that protection away at this time of the year as the weather is warming up, then we can prolong the life of these plants, which leads me back to those boxes on the outside that I showed earlier, where I could take lids off or remove the boxes completely, have them grown outside in plastic, under plastic, to get them growing at sort of September, October time, whenever I planted them. And then later on, take the boxes off to prolong the season of picking for them. And you can see back here, these lettuces here are just starting to show signs of going to, going to seed. But I have got these trays here. I'm gonna move these into the big tunnel tomorrow. So I've got uh, a gourmet lettuce mix there, a mix of kales there, and mizumas and pak choys. So we've got nice greens to replace these greens, which are now gonna to go to seed and get whipped out and go on the compost heap. And I've got chard in here as well. This is doing quite well in here. And we haven't eaten any of this yet, but I will be able to start picking it. Now, if I'd have planted that in the large tunnel, I've shown in previous years, it'd be four, five, six foot tall now and not the best eating quality. But because I think it stayed a little bit cooler in here over winter, they've been slower to grow and they're of a better size. So they need tidying up and we'll get some harvest off that. So a combination of the chard, some of these leaves in these trays here, and then some Azuma, which is down here beside this collapsed hot box. We've got enough greens to keep us going for, for quite some time. So I'm fairly pleased with that. So this is where I think the efficiency thing kicks in. Um, 
as I said, I wonder if sometimes we're too efficient. They've made such a good space in here that the plants, they've done very, very well in here, don't get me wrong, but they went to seed, whereas the ones in the smaller tunnel didn't. And I think if I grow them outside under plastic at the start of the year, and then I could change them to the, the boxes that have got the mesh on them when they're not in use, or just take the lids off or, and leave the surrounds on, the plastic surrounds on for a time, and then take that away at this time of the year as the weather's warming up. It just might prolong the picking harvest. Or a combination of all three, growing some in, in, in each tunnel and outside under protection. But I think that's what I'm going to be trying next winter and see if I can you know, just stretch that harvest time out because it, it, it's a lovely food, that pak choy, it really is, and so versatile. So that's something for later in the year. So even now, while I'm sowing seeds for, for this month and more seeds this next month in March and April and planting out, I'm still thinking of next winter as well and trying to organize myself. One thing I definitely need to do is I need to get hold of some of those uh, greenhouse window openers and, and I will and put some windows in the doors of this tunnel so that when I go away, um, you know, go home or we go away for the day, I don't need to worry about this heating up too much, which can be a problem. They'll just automatically vent out and I'll get some for the other tunnel as well. And I have got a wind up curtain for that other tunnel, which I'll be fitting as well. So there's still lots to do, lots of organizing. Um, got to try not to be too efficient at times <laughs> to see, see if that improves crops. But it's noticing all these things which is important, you know, like finding the slug up there on a the protected area. Now I can put a couple of slug pellets up there, just half a dozen along there, so it won't affect anything, but hopefully draw the slugs out. If there's any there, they'll find them, eat them and pass on. And I'll keep searching them a couple of days a week, having a look for them. But anyway, that's it for this one. Look after yourselves, stay safe. I'll see you all very soon. Go and sow some seeds. <laughs>